Hey everyone, it's Everything Neep here. I've been an iPhone user for the last few years. However, recently, I started to really loathe my iPhone. I felt that the battery life was inadequate and that iOS 16 was becoming more buggy by the day. So I sold my iPhone and bought a Pixel 5 instead. However, the stock OS on the Pixel, while nice, collects a lot of unnecessary data about the user. So I made the decision to flash Graphene OS on it. Today, I am going to go through my impressions of Graphene OS after using it for a month. What I think of it coming from the iPhone. To start off, we have to discuss what Graphene OS is. Graphene OS is a project made to harden stock Android and make it more secure. It does this by treating every app installed as a regular program, even things like Google Play services. On regular Android phones, Google Play services is baked into the system and it gets exclusive access to your device, with many permissions being automatically granted and no way to disable those permissions or get rid of Google Play services. However, on Graphene OS, Play services is treated as a regular program, with the user being given the option to disable most of these permissions or remove play services as they please. This makes Graphene OS very secure, hence why I decided to try it. So now that you know the basics about Graphene OS, now I can talk about my experience with it, starting with the install. In the old days of Android and installing custom ROMs, it was a very involved process. There was a high chance of breaking your device as well, if you even went chose the wrong ROM based on your device. However, in 2023, flashing ROMs, especially on the Google Pixel, is very easy. All you have to do is plug your phone into your computer, enable a couple of settings such as OEM unlocking and ADB access, and follow the instructions on Graphene OS's website. The only way you could screw it up is with a super damaged cable that can't hold a connection and disconnects from the, your computer in the process. And it is also very fast, taking around 7 to 10 minutes to complete. After you install the OS, you'll be greeted to this screen where you can set up your phone and even restore it from a manual backup. From there, you will be launched into the stock OS and it definitely looks very different from the stock software that ships with the Pixel. It is completely minimal with just 13 apps installed by default. If you wanted, you could just stop here and use your Graphene OS phone as a dumb phone. However, you might want to install some apps. Luckily, there is an app named Apps, which can only install just the stock apps. From the Apps app, you can install Google Play services and start using the Play Store if you want to. However, because this phone is designed to harden the stock Android experience, if you go into App Info for Play services, you can manually disable every permission you don't want Play services having access to. And there is a lot of them. It's almost horrifying seeing how many permissions Play Services has access to by default. The permissions controls aren't limited to Play Services either. If you have any app that you don't want having network access, you can easily stop it through settings, and that's what makes Graphene OS so awesome to use. I like the Google Camera and the Google Keyboard from Pixel, and I can easily install both, but also disable networking for both those apps so that they can't send any information back to Google. Aside from that, Graphene OS has memory hardening for sandboxing applications better by using more memory, MAC address randomization for changing your MAC address every time you connect to a network, and pin scrambling to scramble your pin pad every time you go to enter your pin. Now for this next section, I will talk about common misconceptions with Graphene OS. The first one is the most common and it's that banking apps don't work with Graphene OS. Most banking I have tried on Graphene OS work perfectly fine and don't have any issues with sending or receiving money. I However, one of my banking apps, RBC Mobile, doesn't work under Graphene OS at all. It just crashes when I try to launch it. The final misconception is that push notifications don't work properly with Graphene OS, which they do work properly, you just have to unrestrict Google Play services access to your battery. By now, if you've made it this far in this video, you're probably thinking, okay, there has to be some catch. And you would be correct. There are a couple of things that flat out don't work in Graphene OS at all. The biggest example of something that doesn't work is Google Pay. If you try to add your card into Google Wallet, it will tell you that your phone is not compatible with NFC payments, citing custom software as the problem. From what I've been told, this is because Graphene OS does not pass safety net checks, which is required for Google Pay to be supported. Right now, there is no way for Google Pay to work on Graphene OS unless Google themselves whitelist Google Pay for Graphene OS, which we all know is probably not going to happen. The second thing that doesn't work properly is Android Auto. This is because it requires system integration, something which Graphene OS developers are not willing to provide. However, there are people out there who got Android Auto to work on Graphene OS by compiling the support for Android Auto into the actual OS. Final thing, which is more subjective, is that Pixel kind of becomes an average smartphone when you flash Graphene OS. If you ever watch any reviews of Pixel phones, you'll know that the only thing that really stands out about them is their software. And I think this is one of the reasons why Google allows people 
to flash their own custom ROMs onto their phones in the first place without voiding the warranty, despite the fact that Samsung and other phone makers don't let you do this. It's because they know that most people will not end up doing this, because most people who buy a Pixel phone buy it for the Google software. You end up missing out on a lot of Google specific features, such as Now Playing, which identifies songs playing around you, as well as call screening and the best text to speech available for Android right now. So if you care about missing out on all of those features, Graphene OS may not be for you. So finally, what are my thoughts on Graphene OS? As someone who has been slowly moving away from big tech and reliance on them, I can say that Graphene OS is the best experience I have ever had with Android. In the past, my experience with Android was with slow, clunky devices, and my experience with custom ROMs were that they were a pain to install and a pain to daily drive. That all has changed now. If you are comfortable with losing a couple of features, as well as a few creature comforts, Graphene OS is an amazing ROM for security, and other ROMs to try to implement the features that Graphene OS has, for example, app sandboxing and controlling permissions. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about Graphene OS and if you would ever consider using it. I'll see you all next time.